back. You're still watching Foot Africa. As Brian and myself had said before the break, we are celebrating a queen who joins the roster of prestigious players who have reached 100 caps for the South African national football team, that being Bayela Bayela. And oh, yes, she is back. She's back with jubilation, back with good news, may I say. Jessica Vakamo Songkomo, you're back and we celebrate Jermaine Sope Singwe. I come back. Super excited, also known as her main. She's doing exceptionally well. Who Cap- calls her her main? You must go on her Instagram and really? you follow herself. She, <laughs> she calls her all sorts of names and really? names that actually talk about her performance and it's how dope. absolutely her amazing. Main. I haven't heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Black um, she's doing very well, club level, international, and I think she is one person that we are going to definitely see exceeding that number. Hopefully in the next coming few years, we'll be seeing her, you know, getting another framed jersey for making it to the next landmark. Talking about the next landmark, obviously 100 is a prestigious number, not just in cricket, but also here in football because we do celebrate the 100 caps. Hasim Manglimang, who receives those 100 caps, to give us a few players who are on that list. As I said, she becomes the 10th. Yeah. I know Ramalepa is almost there. Ramalepa is almost there. It's one player I also want to talk about, but I'm going to start with Noko Maklo, who okay. currently is sitting at 172. The oldest player we have in the Bayala Bayala squad, by the way. Yes, and we know that currently the record is held by Janine van Beek at 185. So if we look at both of the numbers, they're very close Almost. to each other. Yeah. Noko is very active. She's still playing currently at the moment. She's still in Spain doing exceptionally well as well in her club. And I think with a couple of more features into the national team, mm. we might be looking at another female in the Banyana Banyana squad breaking the African record. Yeah, it becomes really, really great. But before we wrap up this conversation about the 100 caps, I want us to talk about Jermaine mm. um, in herself, right? Obviously, this is testament of her resilience or hard work or dedication to that jersey, that yellow, that green and gold jersey. But just as a player, what does she bring to the squad? Something that possibly um, is really admirable. Mm. I think Jermaine definitely brings that flair into the game. You know, she's one player when you carry, when you see her behind the ball, you know that something explosive is about to happen. You know, we, we see a lot of people actually not finding themselves within mm. the field, but she's one person who can feel her presence. She's absolutely pacey. She's very brave. We see her in the final uh, third of the area where she just make, goes for those runs and actually takes all the opportunities. If you do actually watch what she's doing at Mexico, it definitely is the same as what she delivers. And we know there's a struggle between club performance as well as national team performance but she's one player that we can definitely say keeps the consistency from club level as well as a national team she brings all the leadership skills as well to her girls and she's always just motivating everybody and I think she's doing exceptionally well. Exceptionally well is exactly what she's doing if you do follow her on social media I do follow her particularly on X and I know she's one player who's very vocal will not keep quiet if something does not sit well with her and she really doesn't hesitate to back clap yeah. Should anything or anyone say something, it's Uleng Mutsuleng. So congratulations to Jermaine Sopet Singwe. But we're talking, well, she secured her 100th cap while uh, playing in that match, which was qualifiers for the Olympics. Now, we do know that the Olympics are on the horizon, but not everyone can go. And therefore, African teams are fighting fighting for those spots to secure their spot. We know that at the last Olympics, we had the Copper Queens mm. who are still in the running, Jess. Yes, they are still in the running. I think for me, there's only two teams that make it to the Olympics. So that makes it a very, very tough yeah. um, competition for the girls. You know, I mean, we've got performing clubs, performing countries in this running. However, only two can make it. And let's talk about the Cameroon versus Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria obviously advances now and they're going to play against Banyana Banyana who won against Tanzania. Nigeria comes with a very strong squad. We saw how well they did at the World Cup. We've been seeing their contending throughout this tournament and I think they bring exceptional players um, in that squad. Oshawala is one of them. Uh, we saw um, Nandozi is also part mm-hmm. of the squad and we know she's very strong in that um, box and she's never going to let anything pass. Uh, Rashida is also part of the squad. So looking at the squad that they have going against Banyana Banyana, I definitely feel that Banyana Banyana really has a strong team that they're going to play against. And we're going to cross fingers that they make it to the you know finals, which makes them to qualify for the Olympics. Then we've got Tanzania versus Banyana Banyana. Two different games, in my opinion. The first one, I mean, we were flooding in the goals. We got three goals. I think our girls were just enjoying the turf. They really were enjoying the turf. And we saw the difference when we came home. You would expect more goals. 
um, at home. But I think the change in the squad, because we saw it changed drastically, you know, we also had the injury of Ukolo Sabiana. We had the inclusions of Abu Lesekho, who now and Lesekho Nkwana, who makes, makes her debut. But I think maybe that change could have probably thrown us off, because I think a lot of people actually thought this was going to be walk in the park again, and we're going to get away with more but goals yes, in this match. We already had four goals in. That's why you the take the risk. The second leg is an opportunity for you to give other players a, 100%, a, a, I think a, a, that's, some game time. That's why the coach perhaps took that risk to say, you know, we already have this games in advance, but just to talk about the performance, it's very different. Now, what's interesting is how are we going to move forward knowing that we are going to be contending against Nigeria, which is a very strong team. We already have the exclusions of people like Abu Bamba Nani Mbane, Rafilwe Chane, and Ukolo Sapiana currently now who's injured. So it'll be very interesting to actually see how Coach Dez is going to still make sure that the team that we have is probably our best and primary starting team to contend with one of the best teams in Africa. Yeah, I think for me it's also the, the rise of a new dawn, the rise of a new era, right? Yeah. Because you talk about the exclusion of the certain players. Those are veteran players. They've been there for an ample amount of time. Um, and we can't always rely on them. I mean, I'm looking at the next World Cup. Will Obamanani still be there? I'm not saying she must retire, but yeah. do you know what I mean? You're going to be playing up against China that is explosively quick. Yes. I think Coach Des has done quite a good job in terms of, you know, introduction of the young players. We saw Wendy Chongwe who was doing exceptionally well. Um, and she also was one of the first youngest players to actually go to the FIFA World Cup and represent us. I think she had a quick debut and she really just went to the yeah. world. And in Tabisen Majia, we saw what she did at WEFCON, being mm-hmm. one of the youngest players to score at WEFCON. And Hadere is also part of the squad. So I think we are introducing those um, young ones to yeah. put them together with the pieces of experience that we have, like Bonnuko Maklo, so that when they phase out, yeah. we have a strong team to contend with. Be like Jurgen Klopp and let <laughs> the young ones play. We saw what Liverpool did to Chelsea. We saw what they've been doing over the past few weeks. But I think for Banyana Banyana, congratulations to them. We talk about Olympics. The first thought that I come when I think of Banyana and Olympics is Storki being captain in 2012. The big question is, will we make it to the Olympics? Will the Copper Queens be the ones who make it? But if it is the Copper Queens, why aren't the two top-ranked teams on the African continent when it comes to women's football qualifying for this competition?